Hi, Dave Youngquist, Michigan Toy Soldier. Welcome to part two of uh, building a Tiger Tank in 1 16th scale. Now, since the last time we saw you in this series, I've been really busy on this. Now, it might not look like much at this point, but because we're working with a lot of photo etch and we're doing a lot of super detailing, things tend to move a little bit slow. One thing I realized right off the bat and it's very important, and we touched on briefly last time, is great reference material. I want to show you again what I'm using. This is the Modeler's Guide to the Tiger One, uh, Military Miniatures in Review, and this is completely invaluable. Fantastic line drawings, super modeling tips. Grab one if you're considering any type of a uh, Tiger. The other one which is good. Now this one's a bit older but it's still great. It's Tiger 1 and the Sturm Tiger in detail and wonderful wonderful photographs and all the little super detail things that you really need when you're working on a, a kit this big or if you're just going for uh, you know maximum geek level uh, authenticity. And the reason for getting a couple different reference books is invariably you're going to find that the one particular angle that you need is not in this book. Hopefully it's in the next one and if not, maybe in the third. Again, I've got more at home. This one is a modeling guide and there's some real wonderful ideas on paint schemes. This is called Elements in Combat 3, the Tiger One and its variants. Really good. Been uh, going to bed with these every night. There's my life. Anyways, um, wanted to uh, talk about a couple products that I've been using extensively. One is Gator Glue. This is an acrylic glue which is fantastic for photo etch. Now the problem with super glue in photo etch obviously is things set immediately and they're extremely brittle. In other words, let's say you put a part like this with super glue, you can easily, while you're working on something else, knock it off. Gator glue has got a long set time and if you happen to bump into something, there's a little bit of flex. Now we all know that with photo etch parts, really the best way to do it is soldering. My soldering skills are almost non-existent. I'm being tutored, but I'm not ready to show you any of that yet. So, Gator Glue. We'll show you how to use that in a second. And the other is the Hold and Fold 4 by The Small Shop. Invaluable for this. And the other photo etch tool that I'm using is a pair of smooth, flat nose pliers. Let me show you what I've been working on. Okay, I decided first of all to start on the rear of the tank, the rear bulkhead, for a couple reasons. Number one, I thought some of the bending and folding that I was going to have to do with the photo etch was going to be simpler, uh, good practice for me, and number two, if I really completely bunged something up, I'd be able to splash a little mud on it. So anyways, let me show you briefly what we've accomplished so far. We were able to make the, the clasps. We have working parts for the 15 ton jack and that was really really hairy but they are done everything was penciled in because we had to fill all the existing holes for the uh, Tamiya part which frankly is not very accurate then we worked on the toolbox and we made the flapper valves for the exhaust now you'll see the the gray material that is Gunsy Mr. Surfacer 500 I learned about this from reading Pat Stanzel's book, which I showed you earlier, on the Tiger One, and boy is he right. It does a great job of not only filling little mistakes, but it gives a really nice metal texture to the, uh, to the vehicle. So, that's where we're at with that. Let me show you a couple more things we've been working on. Okay, on the Tiger Tank by Tamaya. I've been able to figure out just from reading and going through these reference pictures that they really based a lot of their, <clears throat> let's say, kit production on the Bovington Tiger uh, in England, one of the, uh, well, actually the only running Tiger in the world. But that also means they missed some stuff because there are certain things that weren't on that particular vehicle when they went to probably go measure and, you know, uh, do up their schematics. So I found this week that on the driver and the machine gunner and the radio man there are no periscopes included in the kit so uh, spending a couple hours I made the periscopes that was a heck of a challenge but with good reference material you can do it so those were those were completed I also 
used some of the Tamiya parts for making the uh, the engine cover, but again, using some of the Aber, I was able to super detail it a bit. And this is where all the air cleaning uh, ducts and everything is going to be going, the Feifel air cleaning system. Then on the top of the turret, I worked on this yesterday for about five hours, if you can believe it. But this is the gunner's hatch, and lots of fiddly little bits in there. Um, but it actually was a lot of fun, but we're getting there. So the commander's cupola, we were able to super detail. We were able to get in the small rods for the rain cover. We've used a small piece of scrap photo etch for a sighting device. And on the uh, commander's hatch, I uh, got the, uh, the little retaining flap to keep that in position. Now, Tamiya does include the small springs, and that is a really great detail. So that's done. So again, we're making some good progress here. Well, let me show you a couple other things. Now, this took a tremendous amount of work. I've just sprayed a base coat of primer, but we've got all the working torsion bars in, and boy is that a job. They're working, which is great, which means that when you're placing it on some uneven terrain, because this again is a static model, we're going to get a very natural feel. And then on the inside, we, you can see all the work here. Now I'm not motorizing this, but you need to put in some of the motorization equipment just because of the axles. You're going to need to do that. You can see that I've sprayed everything flat black, and that is so that when you're looking down into this, you don't see, you know, empty areas where, let's say, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the fans and what have you should be. The other thing is that I've installed an Aber 1 16th scale machine gun. The tracks. Let's talk about those. Now, these come pre-assembled, but they are on kind of a, they're, they're a softer plastic. Now, when priming those, I wouldn't use regular hobby primer, so I've used automotive primer because it tends to dry very quickly. Uh, that was a gray color. Let that set up. Then I sprayed them a, uh, like a, a NATO black, kind of a dark gray black, and then have hit them, just sprayed them with a reddish brown color. They're now ready for weathering. Now, some of the things that you'll see in the next video, um, I'm going to be replacing all the tow cable and because the ones with the kit, frankly, are plastic, they just don't look very good, I was able to find the exact correct weave and correct diameter at a local hardware store. Walked in, there it was. I mean, it literally, I, I couldn't believe it. It's absolutely the perfect scale. We'll be using this. Coming up. And for the smoke dischargers, which are <clears throat> mounted on the side of the turret, I'm going to be using k &S aluminum. These are going to be cut and then drilled out far more accurate. And with the Gator Glue, again, we're going to be using this in a two minute video, three minute video going to be coming up and I'm going to show you how we're actually applying some of the photo etch to this vehicle. But it's going to take a little bit of time and I think uh, I'd rather do it on its own video. So anyways, that's the progress so far. Next time you see us, uh, we'll be a lot further along. Thanks to everybody for always stopping by. We'll see you soon on Michigan Toy Soldier at YouTube.